In this video, we're solving an Atwood machine problem. So we have blocks tied together with a string, and there's a pulley involved in order to change the direction of the string. But this is a really special case of an Atwood machine. We're told this one moves at constant velocity. And the only reason this is possible is because we have some unknown friction force acting on the five kilogram block that's sliding along the track. And we'll call that a little f with a subscript of k standing for kinetic friction. And then we're asked to solve the Atwood machine. So we want the tension in the string and we want to find the magnitude of that friction force. And we'll start by just force diagramming. And the second force that matters on the five kilogram block is the tension in the string. For the five kilogram block, the vertical forces cancel. We're not interested in them. There's the weight pointing down and the normal force pointing up just to keep the block moving horizontally on the track. For the two kilogram block, we have its weight vector pointing down. And of course the magnitude of that is given by mg. And if we plug in two kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, we get 19.6 Newtons for that downward force. And the other force felt by the two kilogram block is the upward force exerted by that string. In other words, that's also the same tension. Now in part A, we're asked for the tension in the string. And we know that that two kilogram block is moving at constant velocity and constant velocity means the net force must be zero. Otherwise there would be some acceleration. And there's not much to do here. For the net force to be zero on this two kilogram block, I need my forces to balance and my tension must be equal to 19.6 Newtons. So just to fill in some details, for the two kilogram block, F net is equal to MA, but the velocity is constant, so the acceleration must vanish. And this means F net is zero. And this means my tension must have the same magnitude as the weight, so 19.6 Newtons. In part B, we're asked to compute the magnitude of the friction force on the sliding block. And so we use the same sort of reasoning. This thing has a constant velocity, which again means the acceleration vanishes, which means the net force on this block is zero. And that means the rightward and leftward forces must have exactly the same magnitudes. And that means our kinetic friction force must be equal to the tension in magnitude. So the kinetic friction force also has to be 19.6 Newtons. And we're done. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab and best of luck on your math and physics journey.